All right. Dylan White views himself as one of the top three heavyweights in the world. He does not believe Tyson Fury should be in the top three. He continues to expand on that in this article. So I guess that's what we're going to be getting into. This is the Two Hands Up show. You already know what it is. Yo, what's up, Fight Fans? It's your man, 3K the Boss, a.k.a. Mr. Two Hands Up. You know what it is, man. Coming here today to talk to you all about a little boxing news, man. All right, so... Dillian White is at it again, man. Um, He said this before, and he has some rightful claim to it. He feels as though he should be in the top three, and Tyson Fury shouldn't. I mean... Let's be perfectly honest, Tyson Fury had two journeyman touch-ups and a Deontay Wilder match where he threw it away and got himself a draw. So, um, Dillian White was going in on how he's fighting Oscar Rivas, how he's 26-0, and everybody in the heavyweight division is stuck in him, and now it's a very tough fight. And after wins like Robert Hellenius, Hellenius, Lucas Brown, Derek Chisora, Joseph Parker. Um, he feels as though he's put in the groundwork, and he feels as though he should be mentioned in the top three before Tyson Fury. And he also feels as though any of those guys in the top three, he could rightfully beat. Well, if that's the case, well, I would say you're right, and I would say at the same time, you should just shut the fuck up. Yeah. You should just shut the fuck up. You want to know why, Mr. White, I'm telling you, you should kind of just shut the fuck up. And, you know, your name is Bad Intentions, and I know everything you do, you got bad intentions. But you kind of brought the bad intentions on yourself. So you kind of lived up to the moniker of your nickname. And I'm going to tell you why you did that. Because April 13th, I believe, you could have for Anthony Joshua, and it wasn't like a one, two, three thing. It was like a one, two kind of thing, meaning we all knew De- um, Deontay Wilder was first just due to the fact that he had the WBC belt. And number two, Deontay Wilder ducked it. You had the opportunity, complained about the bread, chose not to take the fight, and now you're fighting the Oscar fucking Rivas. So, it's not like you didn't have the opportunity to be great. You chose not to challenge yourself and be great. And I just think that, you know, when Anthony Joshua bounced your fucking head off the canvas last time, he kind of jarred shit around in there a lot. And you just ain't been thinking straight for a very long time. All of you heavyweights, man. All of y'all doing a bunch of complaining, popping shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just a whole bunch of bitching going on. And... You had every opportunity to take the fight, and you chose not to. So, you're fighting Oscar Rivas for that reason. You're not fighting Oscar Rivas because, um, you know, um, nobody else is allowing you the opportunity to a shot at any belt. It's just the opportunity to shot at the belt you had for the second chance. You chose not to take it. And then a situation like where you got knocked out, even with you building your profile, doesn't necessarily constitute that you will get another chance at a heavyweight title shot. Once that thing comes by, once you're most likely not granted again, unless you get a draw or the fight was so fucking close that it was 50-50 in a swayed opinion that fans are going to demand and sanctioning bodies are going to demand a rematch for one, it was a controversial win, and two, it was a major marketing and promotional success. So, which leads to a lot of financial revenue streams being open like the floodgates. But, you know, so a lot of that goes along with it. So, I just hear a lot of complaining coming out of your mouth, man. So, like, hey, man, talk about Oscar Rivas, man. Focus on that fight because if Oscar Rivas is all of the things you say he is, I don't think your position in the top three is something you need to worry about. You need to worry about maintaining that because since you are the guy who bets on himself and you're on a contract, a fight-by-fight contract basis, you don't really have no money set in stone to where if this nigga knock you out 
ain't nothing guaranteed in your future that you're going to get a title shot. So you continue to bet on yourself, hoping that, you know, we one of these sanctioning bodies is going to be fair and give you the opportunity you're looking for, which is going from a WBC silver champion to a WBC gold champion and really holding a piece of, you know what I'm saying, a world title medal. Not no fucking secondary belt, not no, not no fucking diamond, fucking silver, emerald, jade bullshit WBC we have them going on. Because you know they got 8 million fucking belts and they all hard, they're absolutely hard to fucking keep up with. So, Dill, man, you just put yourself out of that equation, dude. And I just think that, you know, it just always boils down to when Dillian White doesn't like the fact that nobody is mentioning him. He's going to go out and throw a temper tantrum. So maybe if you focus on, you know, your promotional, you know, your promotional savvy in the sense of how you swag yourself out on these, you know, um, interviews that you go on instead of doing being the guy that does all the bitching and sound like the angry ass, you know, grandpa that has all the entitled rights, you know what I'm saying? Um, and he just sound like the bitching ass grandpa that did all these great things in the war. But, you know what I'm saying, he don't feel like, <laughs> and nobody want to listen to that shit, man. So, you can talk about all your war stories. You can tell them to all the presses and all the, journal and all the journalists and all the outlets in the fucking world, all of the fucking vlogs, all of the, you know, major boxing outlets. But the fact still remains that you had a shot at this, and you didn't, and you actually had two shots at this, and you chose not to take the second shot when um, another guy... Chose to be all hopped up on PEDs and throw away the opportunity. Truly, I just think it's the boogeyman factor going on. And, it, you know what I'm saying? And I think it might be a little bit of shell shock due to the fact that when you got hit in the head with that fucking thunderous fucking right hand, you went fucking down hard. <laughs> Let's be honest about that. So, I just think you need to just stop bitching. And just accept what, you know, your journey is taking you on because you chose to take this path. Other paths were given to you and you opted for the one that you are on now. So everyone else, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, and Anthony Joshua is supposed to suffer because you feel as though that you can beat them and you've been already beaten by one of the three. So continue to prove your worth. Instead of saying, fuck a top three, you in the top four. So, all fucking four y'all niggas name being mentioned. So, what the fuck you bitching about? You just mad that you just don't have the one title shot that you want, which is the green belt. You want to get a hold of Deontay Wilder so bad, but you already know he's a protected, you know what I'm saying, boy, man. And you ain't want that work no more. You ain't want to walk through AJ. You would rather walk through Deontay Wilder. Let's be honest about it. You didn't want to go the AJ route. You'd rather walk the Deontay Wilder um, route because you know that's an easy belt that you could win. And the other four belts are something that are quite elusive due to the fact that what you got to go through to get them. There ain't no easy work. The one belt is kind of like trying to break into... A house with a chihuahua in it. The, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're going to get bit in the fucking ankle. You got a shot of getting bit in the ankle, but you can kick that bitch across the room. Meaning Deontay Wilder. The other fucking house has a King Corso in it. If you go in that bitch, you get getting mauled all the way the fuck up, and there's a chance that you're not walking out of it. So, with that being said, hey, man, we choose the path that we walk on, and, you know... Mom always said, if the shoe fits, you might as well go on and wear it. So, that's what you chose to do. You put yourself in this position, man. So, hey, man, ride with that shit. A little less bitching and a little more pitching. You already know what it is, man. This your man, 3K, the boss. As we always say when we close out on this joint, it costs you nothing to pay a nigga no mind. Respect, 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 though. And always hit that like button. Comment and subscribe to the Real Sponsor channel on TV. We stepping our game up. We got a little bit more workout put. That's three today for y'all. You did. Respect though.